And I need to move that up out of the way so I can put the new box there. So I'm not telling anybody to not do this or do this. You do what you want. What's going on everybody and welcome back to another episode of the DIY Powerwall 2.0. Oh, um, all right, so first I have a couple pretty big announcements. Well, they're pretty big to me at least. The wife and I have been married for 20 years. So we just recently celebrated our 20 year anniversary, which I think is pretty awesome. Uh, second big thing is I finally hit 50,000 subscribers, which seems like it took forever. I don't know, maybe it did. So I just wanted to say thanks to all of you guys and girls for subscribing to the channel and watching all the videos. All right, on to the video. So I've been kind of procrast procrastin procrastinating. Procrastinating. That took me like three tries to say that word. On part of my power wall setup over there, basically, where's my drawing at? No idea where my drawing is at. Hey, I just wanted to tell you we're going over here. Hey, we're going over that way. All right, so the yeah. So the original thought or plan was to use that 18 by 18 square box, which I have over there on the table. I was gonna put the solar circuit breakers and fuses in there, along with the paralleling bus bars for the batteries, and also the 300 amp shunt trip breaker. I would still like to do that in one single box, but I just haven't figured out how I wanna do that yet. So I'm tired of procrastinating, so I think what I'm gonna do is, hey, we're going back over to the other table. Come on, at least the plan is for right now is to do something like this. I'm gonna have the shunt trip breaker right over here. I'm gonna have my bus bars right here. That way it gives me enough room to do all the wiring and stuff right here. And then, let me grab this real quick. And then I'll just keep this box for right now, which this whole setup will probably change later, but I just wanna get things going. Probably just mount that box, you know, somewhere right up here on the top. The solar from upstairs, you know, is gonna come through one of these. It's gonna go over this way and then up into this box right over here. And then it's gonna come back out and then go over to the inverter. Battery wires and stuff are gonna come through right over here. Go over to the paralleling bus bars and then from the paralleling bus bars, they can go into the circuit breaker, out of the circuit breaker, and then out this way over to the inverter. What I'll have to do today is make some new bus bars so I can go from post to post. Uh, I think that setup might work out pretty good for now until I figure out at least a new box. I just didn't want to procrastinate anymore. I want to get this project moving along. Another thing that I've been kind of procrastinating on is the wiring and all that kind of stuff. Right over here is the two watt wire and right over here is the two gauge wire from the previous power wall. And I've been redoing some calculations on how many amps I'm going to use, etc. And what I think I can do is use the two gauge wire because I just have enough to go from the bottom box and the top box over to you know, the metal box that's gonna go right over here. Uh, we'll go over the numbers, what I've been going with real quick. So if I just go with the 32 cells and not the Rhino or the Husky or anything like that, over to the 12,000 watt inverter, the max draw, if I'm drawing 12,000 watts, is 250 amps. Yes, it can surge all the way, well, they say it can surge all the way up to 36,000 watts which is ridiculous. I don't know how often I would do that. I would say pretty rare, but I don't know. So we're just gonna go with the 250 amp max continuous draw. So if I just use the two banks right here, that's 125 amps from each bank, which brings me to my wire size. I do have a bunch of that two gauge wire that I used on the previous power wall. That is two AWG Exalene welding cable, all right? Stranding is 644 strands. The amperage is 250 amps. All right, so I'm good with two gauge to go from each bank over to the paralleling bus bars. And then from the paralleling bus bars, it's the exact same Exalene cable wiring except it's two watt. All right, it's got 1,254 strands and you can pull 400 amps. All right, so I think that's what I'll do is I'll just use the two gauge from the banks over to the parallel bus bars and then from the bus bars, I'll go through the circuit breaker and then over to the inverter, all right? So next thing on the list is the bus bars and I printed this out as well. I just got this off the old interwebs. 
All right, so I've got some extra copper plating here. It's eighth inch thick. If I do at least one and a half inches wide, I can run 390 amps. If I go just a little bit more, I can run 503 amps. So I think what I'll probably do is like one and three quarter inches wide. That way I can fit all the lugs on there that I'll need, plus some smaller lugs, you know, for some low power stuff like the batrium and all that kind of stuff. All right, so, well, I think that's a good enough plan so I don't procrastinate anymore. I can at least get some stuff moving. So I think the first thing we'll do today is cut out some bus bars that are gonna go from here to here, you know, two bus bars. And I think we'll do about an inch and three quarters wide. All right, let's get started. Here comes some more bus bar montage. Right there, this guy. So these little standoffs here do have a little edge right here that I have to snip off, like this one right over here. Boom, there we go. I think that's gonna work out pretty good. All right, so now I just gotta figure out how many lugs we can fit on here. And these aren't the exact lugs, but that'll be okay. I don't need to go to both sides with the big lugs. I just need to go which I could. I just won't have room for it in the box. I just need to be able to go maybe three or four next to each other. I think these lugs are a little big anyway. I think I'll be using smaller lugs, which maybe I won't drill these holes quite yet. I'm waiting for the lugs to come in the mail. All right, so maybe I won't drill these quite yet. I wonder if I could put that sticker somewhere else. Probably not. All right. It's gonna go somewhere right there. Bus bars are gonna go right in here. Once you get that centered, I can mark a hole on the front cover here for the 300 amp shunt trip breaker. And I am gonna have to shave down a little bit of the plastic on here. If I don't shave that off, the top cover is gonna bow just a little bit. So two inches from the side. I don't think I'm going to measure twice. I'm just going to probably cut three times. All right. <laughs> I gotta find some tape so I can put it on here so I don't scratch up this whole surface. So give me one sec. Found the tape.
Alrighty, got a nice little fit there. However, like I was saying, I'm gonna have to trim that little piece of plastic. I know it's a little tricky to see. That piece is basically this little lip right here on both sides. It's gotta grind that down. Now we can see how many scratches we put in it. Nice. Looks pretty good. Yeah, I think we did okay. I'll probably just clean up the edges here real quick and then we will call that a win. And then we'll go ahead and grind that off. Next, we gotta shave down that little lip right there. It would be cool if I could just cut it with a razor blade, but I don't think that's gonna do it. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna just try a Dremel tool. All right. We got it shaved down just a little bit. This side I went a little bit lower on. I think it's just really, really thin, you know, right through some of that area. But we got her. Drop it in the box here. Let's see how it fits. Now it does stick up a little bit on this side. See how it bows up just a little bit, but I don't think that's, I don't think there's anything I can do about that. You know, even if I put these screws in it, it does bow up just a little bit, but I don't think there's anything I can do about that. I'm just gonna call it good. Alrighty. I'm gonna call that good. Center this as best as I can, and then I'm gonna mark the holes, which we'll leave it right there. All right, next is the bus bars. And I'm gonna go kind of up a little bit higher. That way I can leave these two holes right here open. And this spot, this spot's probably good enough as any. Alrighty, got all the holes drilled for the bus bar and for the shunt trip breaker. The next thing we're gonna do is see if we can figure out a place where we're gonna mount this over there on the wall next to the battery boxes. And I need to move that up out of the way so I can put the new box there. So I'm not telling anybody to not do this or do this, you do what you want. But we're gonna step on that and scare myself. We're going to gently place this right up here. How many are we at now? 184 volts, 13 amps. Oh, that's only 700 watts, no big deal. Or maybe I'll just leave it like this. Just kidding, we're not doing that. Trying to make the bottom side equal with these boxes over here. 
Actually, I need to get my level. I'm not prepared at all. <laughs> go figure, right? All right, now we'll go up. All right, here's our spot. All right, so this is gonna be our spot for our box. We're gonna go ahead and drill the holes and get it mounted to the wall. Boom, all right, there we go. We got her mounted right up to the wall. Got her nice and level. Got a screw in each corner. I know it's a little tricky to see, but we got her. All right, now that that's on there, uh, I guess the next thing I'd like to do is put that basically right up on top of the box here. However, I can't really disconnect that right now because we're still charging. 170 volts, 30 amps. Yeah, so I don't really wanna disconnect that right now because uh, we're still charging the batteries right here. So we might have to wait until a little bit later so we can disconnect that, or I might just do it a little bit later at night. All right, so from here, basically what's gonna happen is the PVC conduit right there is gonna come down and go into one of these holes right up here on top. It'll be one of these three right here. Wires are gonna come through inside, and then we're gonna kind of go over a couple of holes and then go back up you know, into that box right there. The solar input conduit that goes into the inverter, that is gonna basically take that same path along the wall. And I'm thinking we'll probably go in this hole right here. And then the battery wire conduit will probably make a bigger hole right here. I think that's basically what's gonna happen. And then same for the other side is we're gonna make a big hole right here. So we can have a piece of conduit go from here over to the side of this box. It would be really cool if this piece was straight, but I don't think it's going to be. I think there's gonna be a small curve in it. Hopefully we can do that, kind of like an S curve. Similar to this one right here, but not quite as pronounced, if you will. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna be able to make it straight, but that's okay. Uh, I guess what we could do right now is end the video right there because, I mean, how much more can we really fit in this video? Uh, anyway, that's the plan for now. Like I said before, I do want to get one box so I can maybe try to cram everything in it. I just haven't found the box I want to use. So uh, we're going to go with this for now, and I think it'll be just fine. All right, so in the next video, we'll probably start at least running some of the conduit and probably mount the shunt trip circuit breaker and probably the bus bars. And if my terminals came in, I ordered some new terminals for basically all the battery cables. I do have some of these copper ones, but I'm trying to be a little more compliant with most of the stuff, except for the bus bars that I made and you know, some other random things. Hopefully if those are in by the next video, we can maybe start running some of the wires. So we're getting, we're getting real close. I kind of want to put a goal in mind. I want to be able to cook you know, like Thanksgiving dinner off of the batteries. I don't know if we're gonna make it, but we'll give it a try. All right, so let me know what you guys think. Any questions, comments, or concerns, I definitely wanna hear all those. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Smash that like button, and I will see you on the Um, um, uh. Whoops. Ow. procrastinates.